happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi. We are back at the one and only Titanium Strip Mission Raceway Park for a Titanium Auto Group private track rental. This is the second one of the season that I'm attending. And today I'm gonna to be testing out another very, very cool thing for you all. Hopefully to help a lot of newbies when it comes to drag racing. Something that a lot of people don't know is that when you race in the heat of the summer, the temperatures are extremely high, your density altitude is extremely extremely high, your car will perform that much worse. The air is less dense, there is less oxygen in it, and your car will not make as much power. So, the last video I shot with my B9, I removed just under 180 pounds from the vehicle, which in turn should make my power to weight ratio better. I should be able to go quicker and faster in the quarter mile. The only problem is we are in the dead of summer here in Mission, British Columbia, Canada. It is gonna be super Super hot today. We're starting out the day at 1700 DA, which is way higher than the last time I tested my B9 on the back roads of Mexico, which I think was about 800, 900 DA. I managed my personal best in the car of an 11.20. Today I'm running the exact same tune, the exact same setup on the car. The only difference is I have drag radials on the car, as I always do when I drag race on the racetrack. And besides that, I have 180 pounds less. So what I'm gonna do today is a bunch of runs and throughout the day it's gonna get hotter, throughout the day the density altitude is going to get higher and because of that, in theory, I should continue to go slower. The only thing that should come into play that might affect that is my traction. If my tires get really hot, really warm, they might bite a bit better, I might have better launches, which in turn might net me a better ET. But with any luck, I can show you guys just how much density altitude and heat negatively affects the performance of your car in the quarter mile. Now to go over the hardware I'm using today, I am using Integrated Engineering's downpipe leading down towards their mid pipes. I am using Integrated Engineering's air intake system as well as their turbo inlet, not to mention the CTS turbo charge pipe. Another piece of hardware I'm using up front is my Integrated Engineering intercooler. For my wheels and tires, I am using Hoosier DR2s mounted on Enki RPF1s, and I'm also utilizing B9 A4 rotors and calipers. So I'm heading up for my first set of runs. These first set of runs, it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 1700 DA. I'm utilizing Integrated Engineering's Stage 2 E85 software paired with their race launch meant for slicks only for the TCU tune. So I'm gonna be using the exact same technique that I used before, where I roll the car over to manual in the final gear. So according to Draggy, I just did a 3.120 to 60, and my quarter mile shows an 11.21. Now on the back roads of Mexico, if you guys would have seen that video, still with the interior in, I've already run a 12.2 on the street. So with 180 pounds less, you'd think I'd be able to go quicker. I'm gonna hot lap it and try it again. Whoa. I burnt out pretty good there. <laughs> Feels nice and strong though. Still that shift to fifth sucks falling out of AMAX. <laughs> Still fun regardless. Well, what do you know? I may just have run my personal best. My first 11-1. An 1117 on Draggy. So even though I have 180 pounds reduced, and a 1700 DA currently, it's only gonna get worse. I just ran the quickest I've ever gone. Zero to 60 was a 3.13. I think that was virtually the same zero to 60. So maybe a better gear shift, still not as good as it could be, but freaking awesome that I probably just ran my personal best. That'll probably be the quickest I go today because it's only gonna get hotter. I'll grab the time slip and share it with you all. Now time for my official slips, not a draggy, but an actual NHRA certified drag strip time slip. Damn, that's a tongue twister. First run, I netted a 60 foot of a 1.59, back into the 1.5s, good to see. I managed an 11. 0.20 at 122.48. So even though it is significantly warmer and the DA is high, 
This 180 pound weight reduction definitely helped. My trap speed is still up there, so pretty damn impressive. But my new personal best, super excited to say that, and something that I did not expect to see today, I managed a 1.6160 foot, that was expected. We could feel the little chatter of the tires as I accelerated. It wasn't as much of a dead hook like it was the first time, and that wasn't a dead hook. There's a little bit of spin. I just remembered I set up slow motion cameras. Check out these launches. Pretty cool action shots from the side of the car on launch. I haven't done that before on this car. So cool to see how the car launches in slow motion. But as for my personal best, I have now run an 11.18 at 122.85 miles per hour. Almost 123 miles per hour in this warmth, in this heat. Pretty freaking cool. I don't expect to go any quicker or any faster than that today. It's only going to get hotter and we'll see if my theory is correct. I'll wait probably an hour or two, let that heat raise, let the density altitude raise, and I'll go out and I'll do the exact same thing, a couple back-to-back -back runs to see how quick and how fast we can go in my B9S4. So I'm heading out for run number three and run number four. I'm now sitting at about 85, 86 degrees Fahrenheit and 2200 DA. I think it might be closer to 2300 DA right now. The ironic thing about today though, is I want to go quicker. <laughs> I'm trying to go quicker, but I don't think that'll happen. But who the hell knows? Maybe the tires will be warmer. The track prep will be heated up and I might get a better launch. Anything's possible. Jeez. It's launching pretty well today. I do have that CTS transmission insert now, as well as that JXP drive shaft performance carrier, so many words. <laughs> They're both really working well, and I can feel the car shifting extremely well. Draggy shows my best zero to 60 of the day by this much. 3.11, it shows an 11.20 on Draggy. So last time out was the first time, I think, in the history of me owning a Draggy where the GPS reading on Draggy was actually quicker than the time slip from an NHRA certified drag slip. Usually it's the other way around. And my drag uh, time, my slip from the drag strip is always quicker than it is on Draggy. Time to whip around and do run number four. So sadly, a bunch of junior dragsters, well, not sadly, really excited to see the youngins out drag racing. They came up in between my runs, so I won't be able to do a back-to-back -back run. So now I'm waiting patiently for them to finish their eighth mile runs. And as soon as they're done that, I'll do my second run at this DA in this temperature. These are the junior dragsters. Just giving her hell. These are kids. I think they're under 12 years of age. It's so cool to see. Here we go. Damn. That hooked and boogie. The heat in the tires and the heat on the tracks definitely helping with traction. Not quite as much oomph up top though. Ugh, it is getting freaking hot. Quarter mile on Draggy shows an 11.26. Zero to 60 consistent in that 3.1s. This was a 3.16. We'll spin around, grab those slips, and see what I really did in the quarter mile. So remember at the beginning of the video when I said traction might be the one thing that changes the outcome? Well, it freaking happened. Of course it happened. Trying to show you guys the effects that density, altitude, and heat has on your car. And I tied my run from before. I don't think I've ever done that. I ran an 11.180 again. But this time I managed to do so because I cut a 1.0. 57160 foot. So my launch was exceptionally good. Now, when you compare that to my previous run in the day, my trap speed was lower. So the first time out, when I ran an 11.18, 
My 60 foot was a 1.61, so not nearly as good of a launch, but I trapped 122.85, almost 123 miles an hour. This time when I ran the 11.18, I only managed 122.44, so almost half a mile per hour slower, but I managed the same ET. The other run, the second run, while I waited for those awesome little junior dragsters to go, another amazing 60 foot of a 1.58. These tires love heat and that's why they're gripping so well because it's so hot today. But slowest run of the day of an 11.23 at only 121.8 miles an hour. So I'm gonna wait a bit longer this time. I'm gonna give a bit more of a gap. It is supposed to get near, I think 95, 96 degrees today. And that density altitude is forecasted to be around 3000 today. So I'll wait even longer to go out for my next set of runs. And again, it sucks. I'm trying to go quicker, but I know it probably won't because it's only gonna get more difficult for my car to make power in this heat and this density altitude. Holy crap, guys, 92 degrees Fahrenheit and 2,900 DA for these final two runs. I'm sweating like a pig. You should not be drag racing in this heat. Ugh. Gonna try and go as quick as I can again. See if I can do even quicker. The heat has definitely helped my grip off launch, but not making as much power up top. Jeez, it launches so hard from the heat. They grip so well. Rolling over to fifth gear to top it out. Yeah. Damn. Those launches feel really healthy today. If only I could do those kind of launches in colder weather. Holy crap. Okay. Final runs of the day at this insane temp and DA. 11.28 on draggy, zero to 60, super consistent today of a 3.18. So 3.1s all day. That's freaking awesome, good to know, but not making as much power up top. According to draggy, I'm down to barely over 120 miles per hour. Obviously draggy and the time slips will be different from one another. Time to do one more run before I call it a day. Something that I'm really digging about this lightweight mod and dropping 180 pounds, my car sounds even better in the cabin. You can really hear the IE downpipe and the IE midpipe sounding so good versus the OEM exhaust. I still have the OEM back portion, but those two portions are upgraded and I think it sounds so much better. are so good today, it's just up top. Final run of the day. Car feels really good, it's just that it's too damn hot out. Oh, so gross, so gross. By far the slowest run of the day. That's my first zero to 60 recorded. That was a 3.2. All the other ones were 3.1 something. Quarter mile on draggy shows an 11.30. Damn. So what do we have for trap speed on that one? 120.05, just barely over 120 according to Draggy. We'll go pick up the slips and check out my results of my final two runs. I'm sorry if I'm super sweaty in this video, guys. Whew. It's crazy hot out here and I don't do well in heat. <laughs> So a big reason why I've had arguments with people in the past about why I don't consider draggy records actual world records, because draggy's never freaking accurate. I think this is my fifth, fourth or fifth, I think, draggy that I've been through. Because I keep going through different ones, I ordered a bunch, and some, they appear to be quite close to what I run on track, because obviously your NHRA certified drag strip, which is what I'm at right now, would have the official times. So I compare that with my draggies and you hope that you have one that's accurate and then all of a sudden one day it just stops being as accurate. This one today sucked. My mile per hour on draggy shows 120 miles per hour, 120.05 to be exact. On the slip, I ran 121.17. Not even freaking close, it's a mile per hour difference. When you're talking about world records and trying to get it as close to as possible as what you're getting on a drag strip, that's not close. I'm sorry guys, it's not. So for ETs, 
I ran an 11.257 at 121.22 on the first run. And on that first run, I managed another 1.5760 foot. So I'm launching incredibly well today from the heat, but because of the high temperature and the density altitude, I am sucking all that power away on the back half of the track. Now for run number two, I did an 11.277 at 121.17. That again, with a 1.5860 foot launching incredibly hard out of the hole and then falling off up top. So what do we know from start to finish? The fastest run today was a 122.85, just shy of 123 miles per hour. That was in the first set of runs. Then when you go to the final set of the runs, these ones right here, I managed 121.17 and 121.22. That's a mile and a half different. Same tune, same car, same setup, same fuel in the tank, same everything except for temperature and density altitude. That's the one difference that slowed down my car. The hotter it got, the less dense the air became, the less oxygen that was in the air, I went slower and slower and slower. So I hope that kind of gives people that are new to drag racing a little bit of an insider info on why if you live in high elevations, if why your density altitude's really hot, if you're in the middle of summer, it's 100 degrees outside and you're trying to race somebody and you feel like your car's falling flat, that is why. Cars don't make their maximum amount of power in the heat. They do much better in the cold. A lot of people in the B9 community, their S4s and their S5s that are on that quarter mile drag sheet that I refer to, a lot, if not all, actually I lied, all of them, every single one of them that's quicker and faster than me, all have a much lower density altitude. I think the lowest I saw on that sheet was like 2600 below negative 2600 DA and I was doing these runs at a lowest of 1700. We finished off today at just shy of 2900 DA running those 11 twos at 121. Makes a massive difference in terms of how well your car performs. That, that sums it up in a nutshell though guys. It is so hot in here, I need to clean up, I need to wipe up and get out of this mess. <laughs> but I think I'm sick of running 11s guys, I really am. Uh, I've been running 11s for a long time now, and that is much too slow for my liking. So, stay tuned to the channel. More power, more torque. It's coming very soon, and I'm sure you guys can guess what I'm going to do next. Until next time, guys, take care.